Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another video and a very foggy Lake District. Let me just turn that off, actually. So this morning, I've come to photograph the woodland that you see behind me. And at the moment, it's in lots of fog. Now, I do know that that fog is fairly localised. I've been out to another location this morning already in the dark to check it out and um, do a bit of scouting. And uh, I know that the fog is very, very localised. So. I may be limited to the amount of um, time I can spend with these conditions, so I'm not going to hang around this morning. Um, I had a lovely night last night at the Vanish Patch in a little lay-by just directly behind the camera, lovely and quiet, and couldn't ask for a better location considering where I want to shoot this morning. So I'm going to get my skates on, get down there now, and, uh, and see what, uh, see what uh, reveals itself. Truly stunning conditions. So a quick um, plan of action. Just look at the trees that are silhouetted against that thin layer of mist. Wonderful. Plan of action is to get into the woods. Um, I've not seen anything en route that's worthy of a, a typical landscape picture, so I've carried on walking. Um, lots of evidence of frost on the bracken on the floor which ordinarily I would definitely be looking to shoot, but because we got these conditions, I'm sticking to the broader plan of looking for something in the woods itself. I think this frost will probably um, hang around for a little longer than, than the fog will, will last, so I'm gonna prioritize that. resist this one. It's not very often I photograph my mare's subjects but just look at that behind. I've got the camera set up just, just there and what I've done is I've focused entirely on this lovely old sycamore tree. Actually no, I'm telling lies, it's an oak tree. Lovely oak tree and uh, just this jetty. This holly on the left hand side is a bit of a problem but uh, I've managed to exclude it and just focus on these two elements. I can't move that way to try and exclude the tree and shoot that way because there's uh, Scots Pine Plantation just to the right. So I really want it just to be about um, the foreground, so the, the, the landform that the tree is growing in and the jetty and the tree, just creating this sort of juxtaposition, if you will. I've got my wide angle lens on, it's on 35 mil. I feel like I'm missing other opportunities here, but it's just too good to miss. F14, 100 ISO, one second exposure, and just allowing the background to burn out. And I think this is probably gonna be one of those black and white shots, possibly. So I'll put that on now. Now this image actually caught me off guard in that when I got it back to the PC, it failed in every regard to please me like I imagined it would. The tree and the jetty are just too competing for my liking and do not complement one another at all. No amount of post-processing could change this for me. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Right, by way of a quick update, as you can see the conditions are still really beautiful, although I'm not, I'm not convinced that they're going to hang around any longer than I thought earlier on. Um, this particular location I've never been to before. It's essentially two blocks of woodland, one that way and one behind me. I've just been into the one in that direction and as soon as I walked in I got the feel that it wasn't right, it didn't have the character that I'm looking for. The area behind me I have seen um, shots of on Google image search so I know or at least I think it's a better quality woodland, so I'm heading there now, but I, I couldn't help but stop and notice this, this outcrop of land here. Um, it really grabs your attention as you walk through in the mist, but I will point out there is a house sort of towards the end of it, so I'm not gonna photograph it. I'm gonna stick to the plan and get to the woodland uh, quickly before this disappears. Right, I found a shot but I'm whispering because there's another photographer just over there. Now the shot that I've got, it's a little bit twee, 
but it's really nice. So the shot that I have lined up as you can see just behind me there the island now because I've had to move over to this side I don't have the separation um, between the island and the, and the headland but um, I'm okay with that for now and um, I've taken a couple of shots already there's my camera now then just a few seconds ago there were some ducks two ducks just swam across the scene and if I can just reduce that exposure up there there's a patch of cloud that's got a little bit of colour in it and I use that as part of the composition now what I did was just see that just brighten that up a little bit there we go so I took two shots, I took one at f4.5 to try and freeze, <laughs> let's say, action of the ducks as they swam across the scene. And I took one at f11 just to get the optimum sharpness out of the lens. Now I do know that we've got some twiggage, some branches just up here on the top. Now I'll probably crop that portion out. Um, I could just remove it with Photoshop, either or, I'm not too, not too worried. But, um, but really quite a nice and tranquil view, so I'll put that on now. Right, so I've managed to move into a better position. Um, I got to where the, the other photographer was when I first arrived, um, Alan, who I had a quick chat with. Nice to meet you, Alan, if you're watching the film. Um, so what I've got is a very, very straightforward, nice, easy, typical Lake District scene. Rustic fence just going off, taking your eye into the distance, looking at the hills. You've got some beautiful mist drifting through uh, across Derwent Water at the moment. I'm gonna keep taking images and what I've done, so I've got the fence leading in along the from the bottom left hand corner into the middle of the frame and then the island I've got that positioned just in the sort of above the top left hand third so you've got these two, two elements and like I say you've got the mist drifting across. So what I'm going to do is I'm at f11, I'm going to take one nice and sharp for the fence line and this is going to be a focus stack, you can tell where I'm going with this and then I'm going to take one for the island and just sharpen that up on that vegetation there on the edge where it's nice against the contrast of the white and then take another one. Now what I am going to do um, just as a, a trial is I am going to take one at f22 and try and get a straight shot because I would always prefer a straight shot over a over a focus stack um, and if that works then that'd be great if not we can use the stack so I just check the focus what I'm going to do for the f22 shot is I'm going to my focusing point is going to be the very bottom of the reflection which in my frame is just below the midway point just just above the third level the third line Right, so what I'll do now is I'll get this camera down to a more acceptable level and I'll show you the composition. So there you can see the image that I've just taken in the last few minutes and I'll cycle through them. So there was my hand, you see, there was that was the focus stack of those two. One, two, and then I'll just move back and you can see, so I've taken some in the landscape orientation 
It's really quite dark earlier on and some with a complete mist where you can't see anything of the distant hills. It's a brighter one um, in case I need to use a bright one and they're, they're back to the early ones over the other side which you uh, which I, I shot just before I managed to move into this new position and I do like this new position because you've got that separation with the island which I really quite like Oops. so yeah really quite a nice pleasant shot and uh, you might notice there that I've got the uh, the case 0.6 um, neutral density graduated filter on now because the sky is just a little bit on the bright side as you can see and I've also got the polarizer on as well so I'll put that shot on now Right, let's get out to the sun. So my camera is just on the little pathway here. I really wished that I had got here about half an hour, 45 minutes sooner, but I can always come back to this location. I'll show you what I've been shooting. So can you see that birch there, lovely birch. Let me see if I can just darken that down a bit. So, Oh, too far. There. So the shot that I've been working on has been just getting rid of the sky and the tree in the left hand side there, but including all the frosted leaves um, in sorry the frosted grasses in the foreground. So as I was just saying before my battery died is um, you've got all the frosty grasses in the foreground. Now as I've been changing my battery I've just noticed that cat bells in the background is starting to um, get a bit of mist coverage on it so I'm going to go back to the camera and see if that provides me with any other opportunities. Now the big problem that I have is if, if you look at the branches on the birch the sun's not even I don't know 20 degrees above the horizon but yeah the whites on the branches are burning out so on my um, on my main camera I've taken a number of exposures um, with several quite underexposed to try and retain some um, some detail in those whites birch is notoriously difficult for that when it's getting directional sunlight as it is right now but I just love the way that you've got these bands of colour on my camera I've got the white balance changed ever so slightly so that this here um, is more of a bluey colour and then you've got the band of red in the middle and then a band of yellow and I really like that and uh, I'm, I haven't decided yet but I'm probably just switch that round but I'm probably gonna crop it I, I do like it without um, cat bells in if I can get it full of mist it'd be ideal um, but I don't like the top of it showing and in a, to be able to show the tops of the upper branches of the tree cat bells is also in view and the trouble with that is that there's a line of the hillside which just interrupts the composition so I'm being very careful about what to include and what to exclude so as you can see the mist has rolled in and I'm taking shots frantically various um, compositions and I'm not going to focus on one because I just don't have the time so what I'll do is I'll carry on shooting and I will put the best one on now
Right, so I've moved away from that open section. It was all very, very frantic down there, not relaxing at all. Uh, the, the light completely changing all the time. It was virtually impossible to film. Now, as luck would have it, the mist has stuck around in this section of woodland that I'm in now, and I've been wandering around with no idea of where I'm going really, just hoping to, to, to drop on something. And the eagle-eyed ones among you will have already noticed that um, there's a potential scene, well there is a scene, behind me and my camera obviously is up and ready and now I've already taken the shot. I didn't want to hang around because you just never know with this stuff. It just one minute it's there, the next it's gone. But it seems to be sticking around now. I've got my shot so I'm not too worried if it goes and I can comfortably in a very relaxed way talk you through it. So my lens is at 85 mil. <clears throat> the point of interest clearly is this lovely shapely tree in the centre and then you've got two vertical ones off to the left of it and then off to the right there's another very very straight tall one. Um, on that side creating this balance. So you've got three trees flanking the main subject. There's not really a great lot to add to that. Um, I've not got a lot of foreground, a reason being it's not that appealing. It's, it's pretty much a two-dimensional image more than anything. Um, as you, obviously I've got the 85mm lens on so I'm excluding a lot of what's in front of me and it is just focusing on that, that little window there. Now there is one annoyance and that is just to the right of the, the tree, the main character, there is a, a, a tree stump where oh, a tree has been felled, it's been cut off with a chainsaw. Now there is conveniently another stump in front of it that's mossed over and I did try to get the camera down really low to use that as a buffer so you couldn't see the, um, the cut off one and whilst it did do that job it then created more problems with these down here you've got lots of rush tussocks these here and when I got down really low these started to become in the way and there was lots of well there was more issues with depth of field and it wasn't worth stopping down to include them because they're just not that interesting. So let me get the camera up now and we'll just have a look at the composition. So this is my shot as I've got it lined up. What I will say as I just fiddle around with this is that the aspect ratio is a difference between the video camera and the stills camera. I've got a lot more top and bottom and a lot less on the left and right hand sides. Um, so just bear that in mind. Things like um, the top of the tree is certainly in on my frame. Um, being careful not to include that offending piece of twiggery just up there. I just managed to, um, to keep that out. And my, my stills camera is just a little bit lower so that I can still get the top of the trees in whilst excluding there. I think on, from this position, I think it just comes in at about the same time as the tops of the tree shows. So, there we go. The stump that I talked about, you can still see the top of it just there, but it's not too distracting, I don't feel. Um, you can see obviously the main tree to the right hand side there, which is gonna be my um, my main point of interest on this side and then again you've got the two straight ones just up and down here. I'm really pleased with that shot. It's um, I feel like it was one that I, I was sort of hoping for today um, and I feel like I've got there which is always nice and rewarding. So in terms of settings uh, before I put that on, I'm on f11, I'm on a tenth of a second at 100 ISO as I've said, 85mm lens, no filters, so I'll put that on now.
So this is going to be a one take segment. I've got some really special conditions going on right now. Some lovely pools of light and mist in an absolutely stunning shot. And I've not filmed the setting up or the tweaking of the composition because I just wanted desperately to get it right. I've got that right now so I'll show you the composition. This is what I've got in front of me. Just brightening up now so you can see that central larch and there's a pool of light on it. And you've got these two trees here, left and right, and lots of complementary trees off to the right as well. But that pool of light is absolutely stunning. Now, I want to show you something quite hilarious now. And those of you that follow me on social media may well have already seen this, but those of you that have got your fancy cameras with your in-camera cropping, I don't have that luxury. So what I've done is I've made this out of cardboard, leftover bits and bobs from Christmas, and I just help, it just helps me to visualise the panoramic format. I'll take another one quickly because it's really lovely. And that's essentially the composition. And I know it's not great through the back of this, but um, hopefully you can appreciate what I've done in terms of cropping it down. But um, I've also got the, obviously, the, the much broader view, should I need it. But I just feel that the, um, let's dial that out a bit, the information that I've, that I've recorded down at the bottom here it really adds no value to the shot. And similarly, right at the top, it gets quite bright. And I think it's all about this central band. In terms of um, aperture and shutter speed, there you go, 100 ISO, f9.5, just to help um, emphasize that mist and a tenth of a second and in terms of focal length I'm on 45 mil so reasonably wide just to encompass the trees left and right so I'll put that on now I think I'm done. What a spectacular end to the morning that was. I feel like this video has been a real frantic one. It, I feel like I've been all over the place. I've been running around chasing the light. Not something I'm particularly used to, I have to say, and uh, not the most relaxing time of my life, but thoroughly enjoyed it nonetheless. I'm gonna put all the images on as per usual at the end, and if there's any that I've taken that I didn't include in the video, I'll be sure to put them on as well. There were one or two that I just grabbed and didn't have time to film. So as per usual, leave some comments below. Let me know what you think of today's video. Um, don't forget to subscribe and as always, ring the bell for notifications. Um, I will just say as per last video, my workshops for 2024 are now available. So nip over to simonboothphotography.com and uh, have a look at those. So I'm gonna leave it there. So thank you all so much for watching. It's been a pleasure. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.